All righty. Cool, cool. People will be joining here shortly, it looks like. Um, awesome. Looks like we're with just a little bit. Cool. All right. Well, hi, everyone. Thanks again for tuning into another live stream. For those who don't know me, my name is Charlie. I am one of the sales associates with the camera company. Um, this week's topic I want to talk about is discussing the differences and the pros and cons of cloud storage as well as external hard drives. Um, when it comes to storing photos and um, various images, projects, videos, um, there's a lot of different things that you can work with. Um, I myself am kind of loyal now to my hard drives, but also there are times when I've learned that cloud storage can be extremely beneficial. Now, the tricky things to come into play, though, is how do I figure out what works best for me? Um, so hopefully this kind of gives you an idea. Hopefully it kind of gives you an idea of how much you can anticipate to spend, whether that's a monthly subscription, whether it's a one time payment, figuring out if you already have like a previous plan, if that can work for you as well. Um, and to kind of go from there. So um, that's what we're going to talk about for the next five to 10 minutes or so. Um, so to start off, I want to talk about cloud storage, actually. Um, we'll jump into external hard drives after, but I want to talk about cloud storage and the benefits that cloud offers. For those who aren't familiar what cloud storage is, cloud storage is basically a digital version um, that stores your information on a separate server um, versus like having a physical hard drive. Um, so for example, if you're an iPhone user and you've ever seen them talk about iCloud, that's cloud storage. Or if you, or if you are a, like an Android user, you'll see them talk about Google Photos or Google Drive. Um, that's another version of cloud storage. There's a ton of companies and businesses out there that promote their cloud storage use. And it kind of comes down to the question of which one benefits me the most and which one can I use to my advantage? Um, so I've taken the liberty here and I want to jump over to I'm sharing my screen here as I've done in the past and I want to go ahead and I want to show you what some plans are. So I have a couple different ones pulled up right now. I want to talk about iCloud like I mentioned. I want to talk about Amazon's S3 or Amazon Photos, um, Dropbox, and then in addition I also want to talk about my personal favorite Backblaze. Um, so to dive kind of, we'll kind of start, like I said, and kind of just work our way down the line. I'll also pull up Google Drive here so we can look at that one. Um, but to start, I want to talk about iCloud. Um, so for those who are using any Apple device, whether that's a MacBook, an iMac, um, an iPad, um, an iPhone, um, iCloud um, works with your Apple ID and can kind of universally sync things up. So like, for example, if I were to whip out my phone right now and I were to take a picture of what is going on right now on the live stream, because I'm paying for iCloud right now, I could go on my MacBook and I can go and access that photo. It becomes really useful in regards to the way things are streamlined between multiple platforms and multiple um, Apple devices. Um, and the cost can be a bit more flexible if you're not taking a ton of photos, but you have somebody you wanna work with. It also isn't limited to just photos and video. Um, it can also go in regards to storing email addresses. It can go in regards to storing um, messages themselves, music, podcasts, the whole works. Um, so right here, I have three different plans. They have iCloud Plus with 50 gigabytes of storage. There is iCloud Plus with 200 gigabytes of storage, as well as there's iCloud Plus with two terabytes of storage. In regards to pricing, um, the one that we'd be looking for most likely is the United States version. For 50 gigabytes, it's as simple as 99 cents a month. Um, that's the current plan that I've been paying for for roughly now two years, and I found it to be, you know, let me go reach under the couch cushions and find my monthly subscription to iCloud. It's as cheap as that. Um, if I want to ever spend more, I can just add an extra $2 in couch cushion money and get 200 gigabytes. Um, then the pretty standard number that you'll see kind of across the board with a lot of these plans then is the two terabyte number um, with their $10 a month plan. I found this to be really beneficial if you're someone that takes a lot of phone pictures on an iPhone. Um, if you're someone that you know uses an, a, a DSLR or a mirrorless camera or does a lot of video with an actual camcorder, um, iCloud can be a little bit tricky just because it can be challenging to get things you know uploaded to your iCloud account. Um, but if you are using the camera app on your phone, it's easy as that. So that's iCloud. Now the next one I want to talk about is Amazon Photos. And Amazon Photos is kind of a quicker one to talk about um, because the two things it comes down to, the main question I ask is, are you an Amazon Prime member? 
If you are an Amazon Prime member, you are granted unlimited photo storage through your Amazon Prime account. Now, the only downside to it, though, is that it's JPEGs only. So you don't have the ability to work with RAWs, and you are also limited to only five gigabytes of video. Um, I found this, though, to be useful. So through like my family's Amazon Prime account that we have, a lot of my images are uploaded there just because we use Prime so much. Um, and I know that they'll be there backed up if I ever need to. Um, so it's kind of a pretty straightforward. Um, you know, do you have Amazon Prime? You have this to your disposal. Um, otherwise, um, look into it. The next one is a bit more of a universal. Um, this doesn't cover just photos and videos. This can cover software. This can cover you know documents. This can cover applications. Whatever you really need to upload, Dropbox can handle it for you. Dropbox has a couple different options, and I found Dropbox to be really cool in the sense of they have, I'll say, like a business plan that they can kind of work with in regards to being a professional. So for standards, they have $10 a month, and that gives you two terabytes. Um, that's a pretty standard plan, and you'll kind of notice with a lot of these as you explore more that they're pretty universal across multiple platforms in regards to what they price. Two terabytes for $10 is pretty standard. Um, the perk about Dropbox, though, is an unlike iCloud, you can upload whatever you want. You're not limited to just photos or videos or documents. You can upload anything you can imagine to those two terabytes. Um, next up, they have the household plan. It is seventeen dollars a month, um, and you have access to two terabytes for six users. So, if you are someone that will say, you know, um, you and your husband, you and your wife, you know, you and your brother or sister, mother and father, or whoever, you guys all shoot to collectively as a family. This family plan could become beneficial because you're spending a little bit more, but you also are getting a ton more storage that you guys can all use collectively together. So the family plan is great for that if you are collaborating with other people. Now, the next one is the professional plan for solo workers, which is their business per, um, per se. Um, $17 a month, if you round up, you get 3,000 gigabytes or three terabytes um, for your single user. But the big advantage to this one is 180 day file and account recovery. That's the one that with this one sets it, sets it aside from the other plans. If I go ahead and I upload photos and I'm sending them out to a client using this professional Dropbox account and they download the pictures and then you know I have to kind of move things around. Let's say four months down the road, they come to me and they say, hey, I don't have the pictures. Do you still have them? Luckily I can go back and I can find them. So Dropbox can be really, really, really beneficial for that sense. Um, the final one, and this is my personal favorites, is Backblaze. Um, Backblaze is exceptionally cool for the sake of the fact that, well, unlike other plans where you are paying for a certain bulk amount of storage, Backblaze, you pay for what you use. They charge it per gigabyte versus an overall storage plan. So if, if you are using 184 gigabytes worth of storage on their cloud service, you will pay for 184 gigabytes of cloud storage. So you're not going to be wasting any money, you know, with storage just sitting there. The other benefit to using this is if you go to their personal backup route, what basically happens is behind the scenes, everything is uploading constantly. So if I were to have Backblaze right now on my MacBook, I use it at home, but if I were to use it on my MacBook sitting here and I had, if I was paying for it on this computer, right now as I'm sitting here in the background, it's trickling everything uploading to a backup of this computer. So if down the road, something happens to my hard drive or something happens to my external hard drive, I can just grab my new device, log into the account, and there's everything that's sitting here. Um, I'm a forgetful person. So at times, you know, months down the road where I'm sitting there thinking, where's my stuff? Where's all my rods that I uploaded? I don't remember. I don't have to worry about that with Backblaze because it's doing it for me without me even helping to tell it to. Um, in regards to pricing, they have their prices. Um, where was it? I clicked away from it accidentally. Um, scroll, scroll, scroll. Their storage is... 0 0.005 dollars so it is half a cent half a penny per gigabyte um, so it is miles cheaper than any other plan um, so if you are paying for you know 2,000 gigabytes um, you are paying a fraction of the cost of other plans which is extremely beneficial um, when it comes to having things backed up um, Backblaze is very similar to Dropbox in the sense that you are not limited to what you can upload. If you want to upload raw photos, if you want to upload video files, if you want to upload 
documents, PDFs, um, JPEGs, um, XMP files, presets, whatever, you name it, Backblaze takes it all in. Um, so I found Backblaze to be extremely beneficial for that reason. Um, so there's a lot of benefits to um, cloud storage in that sense. It all can be centralized in one location through an account that you can go and access, um, but there are some downsides to it. And external hard drives can sometimes offset those, but external hard drives also have cons. Um, a couple of the things to kind of keep in mind if you are someone that is kind of leaning towards cloud storage. Um, one, are you willing to spend money every single month or every single year for this storage? Um, I myself, I look at it and I say, I have enough of these sitting at home where I try to avoid spending a ton of money on cloud storage, which is why I've leaned the Backblaze route. Um, I'm going for the more affordable route because I have the fact everything else is uploaded for me um, on hard drives. Um, in addition to that too, is how well can you trust these companies? Um, a company is, you know, this company is, you are putting your trust in this company to take care of your items. So if that company were to one day just poof, go away, um, so would your data. Um, now, of course, companies like Apple with iCloud or Amazon with their Prime account or Dropbox or all these companies, they've been around long enough where it's, you know, it's not something you need to really worry about. Um, but it is something to keep in mind. You are putting your trust in another company to take care of your valuable photos. Um, so that's another factor. Um, the other thing to keep in mind as well with this is if you are uploading things, um, it requires Internet. So let's say down the road you have a bunch of things uploaded and you're on the go and you wanna access things, let's say you're like me and I love to, uh, I love to edit stuff on a plane. Um, I can't go and retrieve that stuff on a plane unless I pay for the Wi-Fi. Um, so I'm limited um, to what I can just freely do with images that are uploaded. Um, so there's that offline access that you, know, you can keep an eye out for if you are going with cloud. Um, so that's kind of the overview of cloud storage. The next one I wanna talk about though is the route that I have personally taken more of recently, and that is using external hard drives. External hard drives are nice because they're essentially an ex expansion to your hard drive that is on your computer. Um, it's basically just like a thumb drive if you were to bring in here to our kiosks. It's just basically a super large version of that. Um, if I were to go right now um, and just look up the exact hard drive that's sitting in front of me, which is a Lacey 2 terabyte, what you'll notice here is the cost of these, um, they're running typically around $100. But that's a one-time payment. I spend $100, I have this thing for as long as I need it to. Knock on wood, I've had this thing now for four years and nothing bad has happened to it. Um, again, though, it's like any storage. It's like any piece of electronic. Things like this can go bad. So that's one con of a hard drive is, can you trust the brand? Can you trust what you are using to be reliable for your photos? Um, I'll personally shout out Lacey. They've done great with mine. I've been using theirs for four years now. Um, it's literally gone across the across oceans with me. I've taken it out on planes. I've taken it out on boats. Um, I've never had a problem with it. Again, knocking on wood just to be safe. Um, here at the store, we do sell a couple from Lexar that have also been proven to be super, super fast because they are considered solid state drives. Um, there are two different types of drives you have externally. There are hard drives and solid state drives. And basically the difference is, is how... Um, the storage is structured within the actual device itself. Hard drives have a spinning disk on the inside where a solid state doesn't. Um, it's more efficient. It can hold typically just about the same, um, the same amount of storage, um, but it is miles faster. Um, it can be pricier, but if you are someone that relies on speed and relies on efficiency, solid state drives are an available option for that as well. The other big perk to going the external hard drive route is if you're doing any local editing, like for example, on Lightroom Classic right now, um, all of my images being stored on this hard drive, I can go through and I can mill through all of them at once. Um, if I have things on a hard drive that I need to go ahead and access, um, or on, excuse me, um, on a cloud storage, I need to go ahead and I need to download that first and then import it. Um, this adds a little bit more freedom to having things right here, easily accessible in front of me. Um, without having to worry about um, the time it would take for me to sit down, wait for things to download, and go from there. Um, so the kind of the big pro of external hard drives that I can say is accessibility. Um, if you are someone that kind of sits in one spot or doesn't have time to wait for things to download, um, external hard drives can be your best friend. When it comes to backing things up, the way I do it is I have one of these sitting at home right now that holds 12 terabytes. Um, 
and it backs everything up for me. I keep everything centralized to that one. So if something were to happen to this one, I have my own cloud storage sitting at home in my room. Um, and I can get as many of these as I want to, and I can work with these as much as I need to. Um, the other thing that's beneficial about them too is I'm not hogging any space on my extra or my internal hard drive on my MacBook. If I want to leave space open, I can just simply unplug this right now, and my MacBook is still pretty much clear to go. On here, I have over two terabytes worth of photos, but if I go ahead and I look at the storage on here, um, I'm only using roughly um, a little over half of the storage on here, whereas on here, I'm using over one and a half terabytes. So it allows me to kind of divvy up where my storage is going and allows me to keep a lot more storage available for me in the future use. So with that being said, I will jump back over here. Oops. Um, and that's all I really have to say in regards to those two. There are a lot of pros and there are a lot of cons to each of those. Um, I highly suggest looking into the different cloud storages that I mentioned, as well as looking into external hard drives. Um, coming up here in the next two months, I will have an hour long course in regards to organizing your photos. And I'll be going a little bit further in depth to cloud storage. Um, but hopefully this kind of gives you an idea in regards to those two options, which ones might work best for you, which to consider and where you can get the most, most peace of mind when it comes to backing up your images. So for those who tuned in, thanks so much. And I look forward to seeing everyone in the next live stream soon. Till then, happy shooting.